on. I am Mecha Random 42, your favorite YouTube harpy. And since these videos are doing so well and everybody clicks on them and comments and, and it tends to be the thing that gets out there in the algorithm, we got more Captain Marvel videos, right? Captain Marvel, no doubt, is just a girl, was not the first choice for the soundtrack. Good. It sucked. It was stupid. It was so cringe. It was so lame and cringe. It, she's she's fighting other girls. <laughs> she, it, it is so it is so much the type of thing that like a twelve year old would put in there. It was bad. So I'm happy to hear it wasn't the first choice. Set in the mid nineteen in the middle of nineteen nineties, Captain Marvel was chock full of grunge rock references and featured a soundtrack packed full of nineties music to boot from TLC to Nirvana. The Captain Marvel soundtrack includes some of the biggest records of the era, including No Doubt's Just a Girl. Alright, before we get too much into this, the Nirvana song Come As You Are that was used, that album was released in 91, I believe. If she were abducted, or, or killed and abducted in 1989, she would have never heard it. You know, even on like the first Nirvana album, I know you guys are like, yes, but about a girl was on, uh, you know, Nirvana's Bleach. And then that became popular years and years later, but it was an earlier song. Yeah, but, but Come As You Are wasn't, I don't believe. So she wouldn't have heard that. It, it, it's cr it's It was just kind of cringe, right? Including No Doubt's Just a Girl. The song play takes place in such a pivotal moment of the film, but it nearly didn't end up that way. According to co-director Anna Bowden, the crew behind the movie initially thought about going in a much different direction. They should have. They really should have. They're pretty big spoilers for Captain Marvel up ahead, so proceed with caution if you have yet to see the falsely inflated blo blockbuster, right? <laughs> Because we know, we know it's falsely inflated. We do. But then again, I'm not a news channel. I'm a speculation channel. So, that, so this, is, this is just my gut instinct on the thing. As the third act is getting ready to fall into a rhythm, Carol Danvers, Brie Larson, finally turns on the members of the Kree Star Force. Colleagues she's found out had been suppressing her memories over the past six years. As the battle kicks off, Just a Girl starts playing, and it's a very on-the-nose track to play over the one of the movie's most integral, integral, wow, I can't say that word, fight sequences. It's so cringe, too, because, like I said, she's fighting other women, you know, oh, yes, I'm just a girl. I, every time I get, it, it would have, it would have been just as cringe. I mean, it would have been out of place, out of time, if this movie was set in 1995. But, but they literally had a scene where she kept getting knocked down and kept getting up again. I was surprised that Tub Thumper wasn't playing over that scene. And it wouldn't have been that much outside of the realm of this movie, because whole celebrity skin plays over the end credits, and that didn't come out until years after this movie takes place. I know, it's the end credits, it's alright, you can do it because it's the end credits. Mm, it's, it's so cringe. Everything about like this this movie was cringe to me. <laughs> to her bootleg Nine Inch Nails shirt, which I made a video about, by the way. I'll link that in the description below. Yeah, she has a bootleg Nine Inch Nails shirt. Even in this film, <laughs> like she wouldn't have been she wouldn't have been able to find a Nine Inch Nails shirt in women's sizes, especially in skinny Hollywood actress sizes. Not only that, it had like the the border letters are actually supposed to be the same thickness as the the letters for nine inch nails so yeah oh god in an interview of the empire film Cod podcast Bowden joked that the team had tried about three thousand different songs in the same sequence before eventually settling on the no doubt hit which ones this actually is one of the places in, in the movie where we tr tried about three thousand songs before we did just a girl which is hilarious because just a girl is the most obvious choice no and why did you say that twice you didn't need to say it twice i'm, I'm like thinking i'm messing up and reading the same line twice prefer your articles please you you just said the thing <laughs> For a variety of reasons, we're looking in different directions before we landed there, the filmmaker admitted. We put in, we put it in, and there's something cheeky and a little bit fun about it. People were really into it and kind of fell in love with it there. Oh, because you hired a bunch of probably these, these sort of hipstery kids who probably think it was cute because it's cringe, right? That, that, that's the new thing, right? They like everything because it's cringe. You know, or they love everything ironically. Are, are we past ironic now? <laughs> Captain Marvel's in theaters now, blah, 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 blah. Who cares? Are you a fan of the Captain Marvel soundtrack? No! And I will live through the 90s, and I should know. <sighs> so here, here's the thing. 
there's so many other songs that could have been good in there. And that that battle scene is basically just a fight scene between her and Jude Law and then some of the other people who, uh, her, her, her fellow soldiers, right? Some of them are women. What if Babes in Toyland had been playing, uh, like, uh, Bruised Violet by Babes in Toyland or, you know, and then that's like a very, very heavy, screamy song with a female vocalist. I can't play anything for you on this because we get copyright claimed. Maybe, maybe I could. I wonder if I could. I probably couldn't. I could probably do like just a touch of it for you. But, but yeah, it's this very much growly, guttural, um, it's a sort of, sort of thing. Or maybe another good choice would be, maybe another good choice would be something like the Breeders Cannonball or something. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let, let's play two seconds of it. All right, you get you get the gist of it. Just just screaming profanity, amazing stuff. Great, great song. Absolutely, really love Babes in Toilet. Actually, they were, they were pretty decent for the '90s and stuff. What about something like the Breeders' Cannonball? That would have been an, a fun, stupid fight scene, right? And we're gonna totally get copyright claimed here. Like, but maybe if I play like one second of it, it won't be so bad. And that has its heavy moments too, right? What about something like that? You know, you could have some chick empowerment sort of songs in there. You you could have some of that stuff, you know. You you could have something fun and crazy. You know? you, you could have you could have Bex Pay No Mind playing, and it, it would have been just a sub acoustic thing. I probably shoved in too many copyright in here anyway. I'm gonna throw this on Patreon probably before we throw go live. With the, with the main channel, just to see, just to see if we're gonna get copyright claimed or struck or anything for this. What songs would have you played in there instead? Because I, I'm kind of curious. I probably would have put something a little more interesting, a little more edgier, a little more uh, the stuff I was listening to, <laughs> like Babes in Toyland. I was listening to a lot of that stuff. I was listening to a lot of Ween in '95. I was listening to a lot of Dead Milkman, Cramps, Ramones. I was listening to a lot of different stuff. Oh, and, and um, <clears throat> pr pretty much anything <laughs> behind my shoulder you can't see over there. <gasps> yeah, like there, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of different stuff from '95 that I would have been listening to other than no doubt it's just a girl. Even though I do remember it, I did have the album. I did buy that, but I think probably that Christmas was Christmas money and Christmas of '95. But yeah, what songs would you put in there? You know, like. With with a lot of these like really mainstream popular songs, I usually I usually ended up selling my CDs because I got so sick to death of hearing the song over and over again on the radio. I'm like, well, I never need the CD because I can just hear this anytime I'm in the car, and that's kind of how my my mentality works with a lot of music. That's kind of why I'm such a music snob nowadays because I was glued to the radio. 24 seven from probably 1988 to probably about 98 like to be perfectly honest for a good decade so I got sick of stuff really quickly and I, I kind of ha had this um this sort of revelation that the harder the music was to find the better it sounded for some reason or, or usually the stuff I ended up liking the most was stuff I had never ever heard of on the radio before it was always the the obscure stuff it was never the radio friendly anything right what was your favorite song in 1995? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys don't want any more Captain Marvel videos, the best way to do to get rid of the Captain Marvel videos on the channel is go comment, like, share every other video. I've done probably 20 videos this week that were not Captain Marvel. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on the next video or live stream. Bye! Thanks for watching! If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe! See you in the next video! Bye!